Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here with Secretary Cloutier talking about important topics that I'm pretty sure that are at the top of mind of all of us. So, uh, Secretary Cloutier, it's a honor. Thank Let's you. start. <laughs> Let's start talking about the small and medium business. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, everybody knows how important that small and medium business for our country, but uh, just to refresh some numbers, let me um, give you some perspective. Um, according with uh, INEGI, 42% of our GDP and 78% of our workforce is involved with uh, small and medium business companies. So, Secretary, we live in a hyper-connected world and we are part of a new global economy. According to the World Economic Forum, at the end of this year, 60% of the economy will be digitized, okay? And that uh, trend will continue over the next decade, getting to 70%. So it is really important to work with all our small and medium business companies to, to leverage the new technologies and to help them uh, in order to, to, to get the best from this new world. So in that sense, could you please share with us uh, what's your ministry doing, uh, not just to reinforce, but also to support them and, 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 and helping to work in, in, in this new world? Okay, first of all, um, I'm very happy to be here. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, let me tell you, actually, uh, just talking about how everything is moving digital and how everything is becoming in that way. This morning we had um, a breakfast with the president of La Paz or, or the mayor of La Paz. And it was amazing just to see this group of, she, I mean, it's a she, she's very young. And all the team with her, they're working everything to digitalize the city. I mean, I was very surprised and very happy to see how much they have moved and how fast. She has been only there for a year, and she's moving everything to do, uh, go uh, in a digital sense. On, on thinking about that and going back to uh, SMEs, I tell you that one of the things that we found, and I'm gonna talk about pandemic. I know it's something we don't like to talk about it anymore when we feel so free in, in one way or another. But when the pandemic came, I think that the best lifesaver that we had was technology. And in that sense, the first thing we started to do was to work with a uh, small business and start digitalizing them and training, teaching them, and helping them get to that point. And since then, we have not stopped. We have been having uh, a lot of work in digitalization we have worked with uh, many, many companies, obviously with Microsoft. I'm not gonna make any other advertisement, just to, <laughs> to be nice in here. But we're working with many, many companies and doing very precise work as to be working in um, digi digi digitalization of the companies, especially, as I said before, with the SMEs, and also uh, training people as to use technology and if you have a business, a personal business, or you have a family business, even go into digitalization and use that. Also, if we're talking about Christmas is coming very soon, once we pass uh, Thanksgiving and previous to that, Halloween. Even El Buen Fin, which is something that we have in Mexico, already changed it. El Buen Fin has become, first of all, we, make, we did it uh, electronic, let's say, uh, put it that way. And then we have become, or we have done it in two ways, no? Most of our uh, people goes, uh, likes, still likes to go and shop presently, but many, many of the uh, shopping they do, they do it through electronic uh, means. So we do not have any doubt that that's the way we have to continue. What are we doing in specifically, and what are the things that we have done with SMEs? First of all, we have something that we call tariff, that's a search engine designed to identify the tariff classification of the products, especially if they're gonna be exporting. We have also digitalization of processes in e-economia, which is again another way to put information through citizens, but also, and especially to the small business. We have also the National Foreign Trade Information System, and we have a very specific page, which it's called MIPIMES, uh, MX, and through MIPIMES MX, we have, through technology, all the training that we can give to the small business 
as for them to be able to export, to analyze the products, to see where they can be finding somebody that can be buying their products or the other way around. We have digital workshops with many companies as the one you represent. We have Exporta MX and Comercia MX, which are very precise use of technology as to be able to put your products in other parts of the world or in other parts of the country. And Comercia MX, which is one that we have talked about a lot and that every time we can share the information with this one, we invite everyone to go to Comercia MX. Why? Because in Comercia MX, what you find, it is who is looking for your product or who, is, or who do you want to offer your product to, and that's a way to uh, finding possible way to do in business. And then we have Data Mexico, which is again something that we also share quite a lot. In Data Mexico, you have all the information that it is useful for people who want to come and invest. And obviously, a small business is even more useful because in that sense, they can uh, make analysis and not pay for that when bigger companies have, no? So we do not have any doubt that going through digitalization and helping companies, uh, it is the best way to do so. And we're working with another company also in a, in a partnership as to have uh, younger people and future people that are gonna be working in cyber, cyber security and especially in everything that has to do with programming. Thank you, thank you very much. Really insightful. And it's good to see that you have a lot of focus on, on this area. You already told about um, uh, training, about the reskilling or skilling, and of course, this new technology comes with new skills that we need to deploy and develop um, among the workforce. So in that sense, could you please share with us the main programs that you have for the mid and long term from the, your ministry? Okay. Yes, one of the things that we are, uh, we have been working with this, and actually uh, Lydia Antonio is somewhere around here, you talked to her this morning, and actually with the dean in the, di in the high economic dialogue that we had last year, the first thing we, we put our eyes into was how are we gonna be developing the workforce that we're gonna be needing, especially at that moment was for semiconductors. And then at this year we decided that it was not only for that, that we needed to work in cybersecurity and also um, who is going to be working in all the things that have to do with electric and electronics. In that sense, we started a year ago uh, through uh, CONOCER, which is this uh, institution that we have in Mexico, as to have the uh, people that are already trained, that they pass an exam and they have a certification. And in that sense, they are able to uh, have a better paid job, but not only that, but you know the skills they have. And on the other hand, through Jóvenes Construyendo el Futuro, through uh, uh, our side in the Secretaria de, uh, the Minister of Education, we have been work working very closely as to having people develop skills that are very precisely needed from some companies, especially on the semiconductors area, which is one of the things that we decided we were gonna be working last year in this year, we are going a, a step forward, and we are working also with another uh, German company as to be working in programming, and we are starting at this moment with another company in everything that has to do with uh, cybersecurity. Fantastic. Good also to hear that a lot of companies are really involved in this um, efforts. And you also mentioned about uh, cybersecurity, just to, to give a little color to our audience. Last year, Mexico had 156 billion attempts on attacks. And during the first quarter of this year, um, it was close to 80 billion, okay? So um, the industry thinks that um, it is costing around $8 billion to our country just trying to, to defend from every single cyber attack. It comes also with the, with the new technology. Um, so we, we already have discussed about the importance of digital transformation for the companies, but considering that nine of every 10 companies already had an attack, uh, what are your ministry is doing in order to help them to, to work and to evolve with this um, cyber security issue and to protect uh, every single company? We have not only in the, in, in the USMCA, but also in all other treaties that we have 
internationally speaking, we have a compromise to work in cybersecurity. Actually, there is a chapter, and in Article 19.15 19 of USMCA, it establishes that we have to promote everything as to go in the direction of cybersecurity. In that sense, we have been working uh, with uh, the area, the digital area from the Mexican government, and we are doing as much as we can as to go into the international levels and make the compromises as to have this cybersecurity in international sense. We are about to be signing uh, something with CBP, CBP or CBP, okay. Okay, with one of the international uh, companies on the United States or our counterpart as to have this protection in everything that has to do with cybersecurity. Fantastic. Let me, let me move to sustainability. Uh, the pandemic brings us many lessons learned, okay? One of them is that we cannot continue working on the developing business without being responsible, without taking care of our environment, our planet, our country. So in every sense, every single company needs to cre create, but also to take care of the environment. So um, we'll be very glad to hear from you uh, what do you think about uh, sustainability, uh, what, what are, are you doing for your ministry to help we, the companies in that sense? We have the Agenda 2030 in the economy area, and this year we decided to work in three things uh, specifically, and one of them has to do with circular economy. There is no way we can move on and we can be thinking that we're going to be making any development if we're not thinking about how to uh, take advantage of a uh, circular economy. I think our country it is very good on that, but it has not uh, do it in a systematic way. Uh, so we are working at this moment in circular economy. We're working with some states very precisely, and we're working with the embassies in different part, from different parts of the world as to be able to be moving. And I'm going to put it and I'm going to be connecting it with electromobility. At this moment. We just came out of, uh, um, I just came late because we came out from a meeting when we are discussing what we're going to be doing with batteries, what's going to be happening in batteries in circular economy, how we're going to be recovering cover, uh, copper, how we're going to be recovering other parts because there is not going to be enough if we do not start doing what it is correct. And on the other hand, also, um, we have been working in Actually, and I think this is very good news for everyone, we were in a meeting with the president and with the governor of Sonora, and they're making a big plan for, a, how am I gonna put it, because I don't wanna make a mistake on the way I put it, no, it's a pros, uh, um, transformation of moving from traditional energy to sustainable energy, and uh, they're exposing this plan at this moment and what's gonna be happening and how are they gonna be growing the area of production with uh, solar panels. You may know that we are gonna be having a, in Puerto Peñasco an area of uh, more than two million solar panels. Well, they're putting at this moment, how are they gonna be doing us to make two Puerto Peñasco, two more uh, fields like Puerto Peñasco in Sonora as to be uh, providing energy, sustainable energy to Baja and uh, even exporting, they have a, a, a an agreement with California, and they're planning to do an agreement with Arizona. So that's something that we are doing on one side. On the other hand, if we go back to the southern part of the country, there is a lot of industrial, uh, agro-industrial products, and most of them are moving at this moment as to be using uh, bio-fertilizers, bio not, not the traditional ones we, be, we used to be using, and that they were uh, making damage to the to the environment in some areas, so we have been putting a lot of attention on that. And there is a lot of movement also in the development and the growing of new products uh, coming from the field that are uh, organics, no? So that's some of the things that we are making our focuses. And one of the areas that I believe it is a must for every, everyone has to do with water, no? All the plants of uh, treating water, and there is no way we can be wasting a, a, any more water in the sense that that even the communities, not only the, most of the, and I can say most of the uh, big uh, enterprises are already starting with the treatment of water plants, and that's part of what we're doing on the southern part of the country 
on the new area of development where we can be putting uh, the money on infrastructure for the companies at the moment they're going to be making the, treat the water treatment plants, but that that can be of use for the cities, especially for the region of the south, and that's something we're using, uh, doing at this moment with the World Bank. Thank you, thank you. So let's, let's talk a little bit about uh, supply chain. In the wake of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, no, uh, most of the countries are rethinking the way that they are uh, supplying, no, especially now with the war in, in some more parts of the, of the planet. And uh, in that sense, everyone is creating new, ally, uh, uh, new allies in order to, to try to be more resilient to everything that happens suddenly to, to their business or to their countries. In that sense, well, we are part of a big uh, region, economic region, with uh, the U.S. and also with, uh, with Canada. And we have um, uh, a heritage of more than 30 years working and trading uh, with them. So uh, we'll be very glad if you can hear, uh, share with us also uh, your thoughts about uh, what, what's, what's coming in that sense. Are we going to establish a new ally shore? Uh, or reinforce what we already have in order to, to, to leverage uh, our position in the region? I think this is coming in two ways, no? Most of, I mean, a lot of the work, well, in three fields, maybe, no? We can put it this way. Some of the companies are already uh, doing their own job in the sense that they are work, uh, looking for who are, my, I mean, who are my providers and how can I bring them together so they can be giving me the supply closer to me. And once a bigger company gets here or it's already established here, they are the ones that are looking how can they be attracting the other ones closer to them, no? Actually, we have many people over here that we know that they do that and that they are always helping and doing this. On the other hand, you have the state governments, uh, uh, the state uh, governments, we work very close with the SEDECOS, the uh, ministers of economy of each of the states, where they go very precisely with the industry and they know what they're looking for and what they are trying to attract from other parts of the world us to bring them closer, and they obviously want it on their own states. So the area of uh, development, mainly on the states, it is closer to them. And on the other hand, we as a federal government, what we're doing at this moment, no, is we are making a whole picture, and we're working this through the area of um, Monica Duhem, uh, where we are looking to make an improvement and uh, have a little more percentage of national uh, or products being done in our country. And in that sense, we believe that uh, once we export, there can be more local content of our products, and that's the way we are trying to attract other companies. At this moment, on, we have uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and we have the Minister of Economy working in uh, different parts of the world as to be attracting companies at this moment, Dr. De La Mora, which you all know, and Monica Duhem are in Korea. They are working uh, and they're making all their efforts as to be attracting more of the companies, especially of the main products that we are lacking and that it's part of what it is the future. On the other hand, we have uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs who is in, in Japan. He's doing part of the same thing. And we, are, we have very well a focus on what is that we are looking for. And in a general analysis that we have with the main companies or the bigger companies, and that's the way we're looking and working as to attract very precise suppliers. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Uh, Secretary, you have been uh, personally um, a great promoter of, uh, of women's, especially on, on um, entrepreneurs. Um, I know that you have some programs that you, you have been sponsoring and developing for your ministry. Could you please share with us what are you doing, especially for, to, to, to reinforce the value of the women in our, in our business community? First of all, I think that one of the things that we have been doing, and, and, and I love to see more women that we used to see long before, every time we see more women stepping, stepping out, but what we are doing, no? It's, first of all, we are doing with the web, and uh, with tourism and us, we are doing a plan as to be uh, focusing and we have at this moment 12 companies that have raised their hand and says, we want to be part of this pilot program as to be having more women involved, being a training woman, but also 
moving into a way that we have not only the woman working in every level, but on the higher level and making more decisions and being on the, on the boards. No? So that's part of what we're doing with the web at this moment. On the other hand, we have been training with the small uh, companies. We have been training them, especially the ones that have a woman as the front or as an owner. And in that sense, we have very precise, um, we have given some uh, finance we have financed those companies, especially with women at the front, so they can be exporting. We have, uh, through Exporta MX, we have made, made round tables for women at the front, and we help them export. We are working also in training them with the use of all that technology. Um, and one of the main problems we are focusing at this moment, and it is, not, it is not us, but it is, in a general sense, the access to finances. And in that sense, we have talked to the uh, NAFIN, and we have talked also to the uh, traditional, uh, well, to, to the traditional banks, and say the importance that we have as to be lending money to women, otherwise we're gonna be having those business in a more difficult situation. At this moment, with the uh, BID, we have a very specific program as to be helping uh, companies that have women as a head of the, of the company, so they are the owner ones, and that's part of what we're doing at this moment. No? Great, good to hear that. Um, Secretary Cloutier, we have been uh, talking about uh, many topics, and all of them are related to the industrial policy that you recently published, I think, on September 20. Um, would you like to, to send some uh, final remarks or messages to the, to the audience? Yes, I think um, we promised for a long time and we said we're going to present the industrial policy, we're going to present, and we gave like three dates that we were already going to be launching it. And we did not uh, do it before because we were not ready in the sense that if we launch the, the industrial policy without finances, uh, uh, it was going to be incomplete. And we wanted to show like, the whole picture of it, where we will be talking about human development, and we have already the people that were going to be playing there, which is part of the question that you asked to us. We have already set with us, we already have private sector, we have the public sector, and as to be doing the specific training that we're going to be needing for the present and for the future, that it is very close related to the industries that we're gonna be putting more emphasis. And this is very important for us that we have clearly, that we're not talking, that we're not doing anything on the other fields, no? But we believe that these are the fields that open the door to us or to the country in a more, um, in a broader way, and we're gonna be putting more emphasis on that, where we're gonna be putting money, where we're gonna be putting training, and where we're gonna be putting all our effort and that's part of the question that you asked before when you were talking about uh, reshoring. That's, I, I like the, the, the word reshoring uh, better than nearshoring because then everybody wants to go to the north. Uh, so uh, we have, through the uh, industrial policy, that's where we're focusing very clearly on what are the industries that we wanna bring and who do we wanna um, uh, put emphasis in uh, training, money, uh, and also development. And we have chosen uh, five of them, everything that has to do with agro-industrial. We believe that the southern part of our country and also uh, there are states that are very well uh, located. We can think about uh, Guanajuato, we can think about Sinaloa, which they do pretty well their own job. But we believe that there is a lot of room there where we can go and make uh, a better uh, improvement in those areas. Then we have everything that has to do with medical devices, but not only medical devices, everything that has to do on the uh, health area. There is a lot of room for research, and we have work, and I know that's an area that we have um, a handicap. We are moving faster than, than well, slower than what we think, but faster than what we thought. In Cofepris, no, Cofepris is, so, had done already a plan for uh, from now to the year uh, 2030, when they're knowing how they're gonna be uh, 
doing everything that has to do internationally speaking, as for having the approvals that, uh, so we are not so slow in the permits in everything that has to do with health. And on the other area that we are putting as a, as a main emphasis to us, it's uh, electromobility, and that's very well explained by itself, and what are the compromises that we have, not only for exporting, but also in start to see what's gonna be happening in our own country. And electro, electric and electronics, which is the other area that we have chosen, and that's again, very obviously what it is, everything is going through that uh, process, and we have chosen, mm -hmm, um, uh, and that's in uh, creative industries. We believe that there is a lot of room on that and actually we have worked with the Pacific Alliance. Tomorrow we have a very uh, good uh, event in Mazatlan where we are in, uh, pushing the creative industries in, through the Pacific Alliance and that we believe that there is a lot to do in many areas. Uh, using digitalization also, but also using the, the creativity, using uh, filming, everything. I mean, the room is very, very big. So those are the five that we have chosen. And we, I thought, I forgot. I mean, I, I didn't know, I, I was, I, I didn't know how it was gonna be the, the meeting we were gonna be having today, but maybe we can send you the, the, the policy, the, the industrial policy so everybody can have it and we're gonna be presenting pretty soon what are the uh, achievables that we wanna have for when and how and what are the metrics that we're gonna be measuring because if we don't measure what we are doing, there is no reason as to be doing it. Hard to improve it. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Secretary Cloutier. I'm pretty sure that I'm talking on behalf of everyone, saying that for you to be here is a good sign, not just for this forum, for us, for all of us. Thank you, thank you very much for your time and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.